everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is April N. And today... I didn't quite catch that. Would you mind repeating it? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is April N. And welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm back again today with another video to help you guys out. And this video is not just for law students, it's for any student really. I'm going to be giving you guys study tips and just basic advice on how to survive and how to excel in university. So let's get right into the video. Something that I've realized uh, about certain people is that they don't know themselves. So I would just like to say that the very first point for today is know thyself. Why do I say this? And the thing is that most of the other advice and tips that I'm going to be giving you guys is based on you because everybody is an individual who has his or her own strengths, weaknesses, and just, you know, general lifestyle, which honestly can never be the same as someone else's. So knowing yourself is the first most important thing that you have to do in order to get organized, get your schedule right, and also to get the most out of your study routine. What I mean by know yourself is know what you like, what you don't like, know how you study, that is what kind of method suits you best in terms of studying so are you more of an audio person more of a visual person more of a reader you have to figure that out you also have to figure what kind of environment is suitable for studying for you there are some people who find it very difficult to study at one place so when they sit at one place for a very long period of time they get their brain just gets tired and they have to move about so those are people who usually go to let's say a restaurant to study or to a cafe and they feel better there when there is an atmosphere that is created by a particular aesthetic or because there are other people who are around them who are doing mundane casual stuff so you have to figure out what is best for you in terms of your personality which is also very important because your personality can uh, identify your weaknesses and your strengths so to find out your personality in order to know your strengths your weaknesses and just the kind of general person that you are in order to, of course, improve your studies and improve your study routine. There is a very good personality test that I myself have tried out. This video is not sponsored uh, by this test or by its creators, but I just you know, want to help you guys out. It's called uh, the Myers and Briggs personality test. It's the type finder personality, the 16 personalities type finder test. I'll put the link down in the description box so that you guys can access the test. It's a free test and it goes very much into detail uh, about your personality, the kind of person that you are, your likes, your dislikes, your weaknesses, in which kind of environment you thrive better. And trust me, guys, if you know for sure who you are, it would really help you. And if after you do the test and you realize that the results are not very accurate, that has nevertheless helped you because you know that no this doesn't apply to me then it means that something else applies to me whether or not you necessarily agree with all of the results of the test uh it doesn't change the fact that it's going to be beneficial so i really advise you guys to check it out my next point concerns the people who surround you so i mean guys i'm sure a lot of you know this already when you surround yourself with people who are very serious, people who plan to excel, people who are very studious, that also influences you. If you see that your friend is always studying, you know, or your friend is always uh, answering questions in class, or they are very intelligent and they have achieved a lot in their lives, even though they are really nowhere, they're just at the university level, all of that is going to just inspire you to do better. So I really recommend that you hang out with the people who you aspire to be like or with people who are on your same level. So it's either you guys should be on the same level that you both have similar attitudes to studying or that person is above you but not below. I'm not necessarily saying that you shouldn't be friends with people who are, you know, more into fun things rather than uh, school. You know, people who are not very serious about school, maybe they are serious about other things like extracurricular activities. I'm not saying you shouldn't be friends with those people. I'm just saying that you must have a group of people who are going to inspire you and those people should be close to you. My third point has to do with lecturers and expectations. You have to find out what exactly is expected of you and the best way to find that out is from lecturers. Depending on how your classes are like and depending on how your tutorials are like, 
Oh, of course, I know that some, some courses have tutorials that are led by TAs and not by lecturers. In that case, you can also make the TA your best friend, depending on the kind of person who is your TA. Sometimes they might not be very reliable, but then you should definitely focus more on your lecturer. And I understand that it might be hard to make the lecturer your friend, but I really encourage you guys to attempt to uh, speak to the lecturer after class, for example. So let's say class is over and you have some questions or you're not really sure about something, always follow the lecturer, go to his or her office, try to talk to him or her, ask him or her questions related to the course, related to the particular topic or a particular subject. Don't feel shy. I mean, at the end of the day, what's the worst that they could do? They could just dismiss you. That's it. I don't mean dismiss you from the school. I mean dismiss you from their presence. So maybe they are busy, they have somewhere to go, or they are just not very nice people. There are different kinds of, of people out there. So trying your luck is never going to hurt you. Definitely try to get closer to your lecturer and to find out exactly what they expect from you. I would now like to talk about lectures. Not everybody benefits uh, as much as I do, for example, and I discuss how much I benefit from lectures in my How I Made a Valedictorian video. You can find the link to it right here above. So not everybody benefits as much from lectures as I do, as I've already said. If you feel like you're the kind of person who studies individually and independently better than when you go for lectures, that's okay. But I still recommend you to catch up on whatever it is that was taught in class. You can catch up by speaking to a friend if, again, you're not able to speak to a lecturer, which is what I would actually recommend. But then situations can be very different. Lecturers can be very different. It might not be possible to go and do a follow up with a lecturer because you missed a class or because you missed multiple classes. So always do a follow up with your classmates and not with one classmate, with as many classmates as possible. Compare different classmates' notes. Not everybody uh, takes very accurate and very complete notes. So if you just take one person's notes or you just ask one person what happened in class, that might not benefit you to the full extent as if you ask, for example, five people. So my point is just that ask as many people as possible what went down in class and get that information uh, as completely as possible. My next point is that you should definitely make a schedule and try to follow it. Your schedule can be on your phone, it can be on your laptop, it can be in a notebook and an exercise book, wherever. But definitely plan the upcoming week. You don't necessarily have to plan months ahead of time. It depends on the course that you are studying and the kind of person that you are. I tend to uh, plan ahead. I can plan months ahead, but it doesn't really work for everybody. Some people can only plan a week ahead. That's okay. But if you know, for example, that exams are coming in two months or something, I definitely suggest that at least in your mind, you know that, okay, by the middle of next month, I'm starting to do serious exam prep. This is your plan. On Tuesday, this is your plan in terms of studies. And also, I recommend that you input your extracurricular activities, everything, just everything on schedule. So you know at what time you're supposed to do what. I understand that procrastination can be an issue and I plan to address procrastination in a separate video, how to fight procrastination, why it even happens. I mean, you guys uh, already know that my channel it definitely has an educational factor to it. So everything that I talk about has a level of research attached to it. I don't just give you information out of the blue, even though a lot of it is my opinion. I also sometimes do research just to help you guys more and to provide more accurate information. So I intend to do that in my procrastination video. You guys should watch out for it. Next, I don't want you guys to succumb to peer pressure. I think a lot of people don't realize that peer pressure can be indirect. And you might not even realize that you're being peer pressured. And the peer who is pressuring you might not be doing so intentionally at all. That person is just doing what they want to do. And it just so happens that you are being influenced by him or her. And it's not necessarily to your advantage if your goal is to do well in school. If you are serious about your academics, so when it comes to pressure from peers, again, you have to be really careful about the kind of people who you hang out with and what they stand for. If you feel uncomfortable with uh, someone's lifestyle or just some of the things that someone says or what they do in their spare time, I suggest that you distance yourself a bit from that person. You don't necessarily have to cut them off completely. 
uh, some people are good people just that they might not be very good for you <laughs> and maybe you don't want to cut off that person completely because you like them because they are funny or interesting or sometimes they have some crazy ideas which you just you need more of so that's okay but you definitely have to distance yourself from that person if you feel like every time that you hung out with this person you've wasted four hours or five hours or how many number of hours doing nothing or if you go against your schedule and you realize that a lot of the times you do that because of this person that is a sign that distance yourself and it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is bad again not everybody vibes with everybody and not everybody is good for everybody but they might be great for someone else my next point is about extracurricular activities guys please don't overload yourself with extracurricular activities i have known a couple of people at the school of law which is where i studied and these people just overload themselves with so many extracurricular activities they can't keep up with them not even talking about their studies of course it is necessary to have one or two or maybe even three extracurricular activities which you are 100% dedicated to in addition to your studies. I fully support that, but depending on the kind of course you do, you have to be very careful with extracurricular activities. Like I've already said, this video is not about how to be an all-round amazing or fantastic person in school. No, this video is about how to excel primarily in academics in university. So you have to make sure that you have enough time to study and to study well. If you know that you have a lot of things on your plate, okay, Prioritize the extracurricular activities that are useful to you. So let's say it's a high-ranking committee membership. That is ambitious and this could actually maybe even help you get a job after school. That is something that you shouldn't drop. Let's say another extracurricular activity which is very fun for you and helps you relieve stress. It could be anything, whether dance, whether YouTube, whatever, whether making podcasts, whatever it is. I don't think you should drop that because it's something that gives you pleasure and also helps you relieve stress and maybe a third extracurricular activity which is sort of a combination of both or it's more of a hobby sort of thing which you can dedicate also quite a number of hours to that's all right but then if you load yourself with oh i am a committee head here i'm a committee member there i am an executive i'm the president i'm the vice president blah 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 and then I am a student. I'm just wondering, how exactly do you plan to prioritize all of that, especially if you want to do well in school at the same time? If you are a genius, cool. Not everybody is a genius. And that is why, like I've already mentioned, knowing yourself is very important. How much can you handle? For me personally, I cannot handle more than two or three. For me personally, I could only handle when I was uh, studying uh, law, I could only handle two extracurricular activities, which I was fully dedicated to. When I take up an extracurricular activity, I give my best. I give my all. I put everything into it. I don't joke with that. I don't like half-assed memberships and things like that. So I just don't involve myself in that. If I know I can't be part of your organization or whatever it is, I'm not even going to bother. So yeah, I could only handle two extracurricular activities and my hobbies and then the law. And during vacation, when I was free, then I did all my other things. So that's how I was able to allocate my time. And I'm just advising you to know your limits. And if you see that you're struggling with all the number of responsibilities that you have, definitely eliminate some because it is going to affect your grades. It definitely is. Now, if the grades are not so important to you, in that case, of course, go full on into the extracurricular activities at the end of the day it might be your future but if you are very dedicated to your grades in school and you want to be getting straight a's i recommend uh, you really evaluate your extracurricular activities and hobbies now i want to talk about something that we all love something that we all can't get enough of it seems in the 21st century and that's a social media yeah Social media is definitely one of the biggest distractors, one of the biggest hindrances to uh, making good grades in school. What I would like to advise about social media is that limit it. If you are truly, truly interested in getting a first class, getting amazing grades, limit social media. 
all that time that you're spending on Snapchat, all that time that you're spending on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever, all of those are precious minutes that you could dedicate to something else. I am not saying social media is not useful. Again, this depends on the kind of person you are and how well you are able to manage your time and how well you're able to manage yourself. I am not someone who can keep up very well with social media. I am very addicted to my phone. So trust me, I can be on Instagram for hours. And I know this, I know this about myself. So guys, funnily enough, when I was in a university, I wasn't on Instagram. I wasn't on Twitter. I wasn't on Snapchat. In fact, all I had was WhatsApp and Facebook. It is kind of embarrassing, isn't it? But that's just the reality. I created my Instagram account just this year, 2020, I think in June, thereabouts. And my YouTube is, of course, very, very new, <laughs> just August 2020. I don't, I still don't have Snapchat because I think it's a waste of my time. I don't have Twitter, but I think I'll have to create a Twitter because I have to keep up with some of the trending current issues. It is important. Yeah, I'm still quite active on Facebook, more or less. Yeah, but right now, I think my most active social media platform is, of course, Instagram and then YouTube. But all of this came after I graduated. All of this came after I was done with school. When I was in school, I just didn't bother on these things because I know myself. I know that instead of studying, I'll be sitting on Instagram for hours. And I didn't want that. So I just didn't have the app. Like, I wasn't even signed on. And honestly, I wasn't... Okay, that's not exactly true because in my third year, I did get an Instagram shop. I had my own Instagram shop. It's called AJ Thrift. For all of you guys who still haven't followed AJ Thrift on Instagram, please, please, please do so. The link is down in the description below, or you can just search for it at AJ Thrift. So I had that my Instagram shop in my third year, but again, it wasn't my private account, and I was mostly focused on making sales, and that just counts as one of my extracurricular activities. But besides that, I wasn't on social media, and if you know that you're the kind of person who cannot handle it, don't be signing up for every social media app out there just because your friends are on it or just because everybody is on it. Think about yourself and think about what's best for you. If you are able to handle a lot of social media accounts at the same time and also study and have time for yourself, that's okay. Then I don't see a reason why you should not. Whatever year that you're in right now, if you haven't done so yet, you should find one comfortable place where you can study and which is more or less secure like you know that this place is going to be open whenever you want to study or have to study and that you will be able to reach that place it could be a library it could be a study room especially if you know that your dorm or your room wherever you stay uh, on campus or at home or in an apartment if you know that you're not able to focus there find a particular place which is going to be your main spot and like i've already said depending on the kind of person you are it might be a restaurant a cafe wherever and make that place your frequent place to study and i've already partially spoken about breaks don't study throughout don't study for an hour throughout without taking any breaks usually that just makes you very tired so if you study for 30 40 minutes you can take a short social media break, snack break, just a stretching break. I don't know, whatever kind of break you want. But definitely take a short break, it can be just 10 minutes, and then continue studying. And yes, I suggest you don't also take very large breaks in between studying because that might really distract you and you might get really lazy and not go back to studying. So make sure that your break is limited to 10 minutes. And if you're not the kind of person who can handle these short 10 minute breaks without getting distracted, then forget the breaks altogether, study for a long period of time and then take a reasonable break. If you guys say you do study for one hour, 20 minutes, take a 20 minute break or a 30 minute break and then come back to study. The time to study. This is of course another very important point. I have already mentioned to you guys in my How I Made Valedictorian video that I am not a night studier. I always sleep at night. I don't do any nighttime studies, but I know that a lot of people do do that. So if you know that that's convenient for you, that's okay. And then you have a specific time during the day where you sleep. So after lectures, whatever time it is that's convenient for you, but make it a schedule. Do you know what I mean? Make it consistent. Don't make it like, oh, today 
I'm a night studier. Tomorrow, I'm a day studier. That's going to mess you up. Generally speaking, such a schedule is hard to keep up with, even for your body. Like, today, you decided you're going to study the whole night. Tomorrow, you will not. You will go to bed at a normal time, and it will be hectic like that throughout the whole semester or month or whatever. That's not the best. So if you know that you're more productive at night, dedicate that time to study. Make a schedule, like I've already said about schedules, and put that in there, that you know that you are doing studying from this time to this time at night. And then during the day, you are sleeping from this time to this time, in between lectures, after lectures, whatever time it is that you have available to sleep. No matter what course you do, you would have to write. In some courses, you would have to write to quite a large extent. And then in other courses, it is mostly about the figures rather than the written language. But I'm actually mostly speaking about, of course, the English language, writing in the English language, not numbers or mathematical language stuff. Obviously, if your course is very intensive on writing and mostly, of course, humanities, art courses and social sciences courses are quite heavy on writing, you have to practice your writing skills. And the best way to actually do that is by reading. The more you read, it can be anything, guys. You don't have to be reading textbooks, a big ass novels or anything like that. You can just be reading blogs online. You can be reading all kinds of articles online, articles which are well written, not poorly written articles, but well written articles. Novels also, of course, if you are interested in that kind of thing and they don't have to be very large. I, I also recommend reading classics because usually the language is very well written and you can learn a lot in terms of writing. The more you read, the more your writing will improve, I promise you. And if you do have the opportunity, if you are interested in writing, you should also practice your writing. You can keep your own blog. Uh, it can be an online blog or you can just journal. You can have a, a diary to yourself or a journal where you record things that happen every day. And all of these things, even though they might seem minor, they do help you practice your writing. They really do. So just do whatever it is you can to improve on your writing because it does create a good impression. The last point I want to talk about for today is memorization. Definitely, again, no matter what course it is that you are doing, you might have to memorize certain things. If you are studying law, you would have to memorize some cases, dates, certain facts, certain names. If you are studying mathematics, you would have to memorize formulas, whatever it is that you are studying, science, you would have to memorize definitions. So definitely there are things that you would have to memorize. How do you memorize? For me personally, I like to write down whatever it is that I'm trying to memorize. So if I'm trying to memorize uh, the name of a person, I write it down with my pen. So actually in like in a, an exercise book, which is usually like my Jota or a draft book, this one actually happens to be my notes. And at the back of it is my draft book, where I was very haphazardly, of course, um, putting down things that I had to memorize. And you see, they are not a lot, but this is for law. So it was mostly uh, provisions, uh, sections, things like that, articles, and then uh, case names. Yeah, so what I just basically do is I just write whatever it is that I have to memorize, and that's it. So if it's the case Salah and Attorney General, I just write it down, Salah and Attorney General. I look at it and I write down everything else that I need to memorize. I keep repeating this in my head multiple times. So like I said, when you study, you take a break. When is the break time? I keep repeating whatever it is uh, that I'm trying to memorize in my head. When I'm done with the break, I test myself. So I cover or I even, I even get a new page where there is nothing written. And then I try to put down everything that I remember. If I'm not able to remember something, it means I didn't memorize it properly. So I go back and I check what I've written. And then I try to memorize it all over again. But basically, the whole point is just to repeat things in your head multiple times and keep writing them down. You can do that also on your phone, on your laptop, whatever device that you have available if you don't have a pen and a paper. But it really helps to write it down and to keep repeating it in your head. And you should keep repeating it, especially if it's something very, very important and you have a problem memorizing it. If, let's say, it's a particular difficult formula, keep writing it, keep writing it multiple times. Cover the parts where you've written it and try to reproduce it again from memory. This kind of method, I think, w should work for most people. And if it doesn't work for you, then you would have to figure out, again, based on yourself and the kind of person you are, how you can memorize things. <laughs>
but for me that's the method that i know and it helps me a lot okay guys so we've come to the end of this video please don't forget to like this video and also to subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell notification button in order to always be updated whenever i post new videos i honestly want to help you guys so much to do amazingly in school and not just in school of course also in your workplace i'll be doing videos on that too in the future so please keep up with me and i hope to see you guys later Bye.